We know that Microsoft Intune gives us lots of options, and that makes things a little tricky, like when you're talking about app deployment with Intune, because there are so many options, you can get into some interesting situations. Let's take a look at that in this nugget. Now, before we delve in, let's have a little fun. If you watched my nugget where we deployed a Microsoft Store for Business application using Intune, you know that we went into the client apps area of Intune, and in there, we had our apps synced from the Microsoft Store for Business, and we went in and we did an install on the client, thanks to that publishing, and notice we have the successful recognition of that inside this product. In fact, notice that this was a device install that we did. And there is the device that we did the installation of Wonderlist to. Now, this is bringing up a really interesting point. Do we assign the app to a device or do we assign the app to a user? Well, it really does depend on how you're going to do that deployment based on the application. You see, some apps permit deployment out to users where other apps don't permit that and it's on a device only basis. So you really do want to investigate the app to see whether you can assign it to a user account or to a machine. Something else that's really interesting about this is that you're really going to want to go in and take a close look at the properties of the application more than just what we're getting here, like who's the publisher and that kind of stuff. You want to take a close look at your applications and see what they require. Because if the app doesn't see its requirements are met, it will fail to deploy. And you might not always think of things like, for example, there might be some apps that are going to look for touchscreen interfaces. And if the right touchscreen software isn't in place, they won't think you have a touchscreen and then they won't install. So really look closely at the application requirements. The other thing that we need to think about is updates. You see, we can go into our client apps and we can add applications, as you might guess, that we want to deploy. So I'm going to go into the client apps, apps feature, and I'm going to go and choose this add button. And notice there are many different types of applications that we can deploy from Android to iOS to phone 8.1. Wow, <laughs> that's a time warp. So you get the idea. There's lots of different apps that we can deploy here. And whether or not those apps are going to be automatically updated, which is a big deal, that depends on what type of app it is. For example, an iOS app might be set to be automatically updated, so you would never have to worry about updates going out to the client. It's an automatic thing. But if we do a line of business app, for example, an app that we created in-house, and now we're rolling out that app to our you know, individuals in the enterprise, we have to realize that there's most likely not automatic updating built in like we would have with Windows Store apps that automatically update. So please keep these caveats in mind. Let's do one of these business apps, line of business apps right now in this demonstration, why don't we? So you'll notice what I did. I chose line of business app and then I clicked on the app package file and then I just browse my local system and I found this MSI that I downloaded. So I didn't create this app. This is just uh, a PDF reader that we can get an MSI from the manufacturer. So I was like, okay, great. Let me just grab this MSI as a sample deployment. Notice this thing is 159 megabytes. Now you would have to watch out here. Remember when we're uploading these package files, they're going to cost us money because they're being stored in Azure potentially. So just keep that in mind that this is going to be stored in the cloud. As a matter of fact, there is an eight gig limitation here. So <laughs> I doubt we would have an MSI that's eight gigs in size. My goodness, that would be quite the application, but there is a limit on the size of the app package file that we can upload here. All right, so that looks good. I will say okay. 
And notice we could go in and use this configure to add like a description, the publisher name, etc. And notice that some of these are actually required. So I'll just say a uh, PDF reader. How about that for the description? And the publisher, we will say Foxit. I don't know if that's their name, but I will pretend that it is. So we're getting these uh, you know, necessary ingredients filled out. Notice this is where we can put it in a category. That's pretty slick. Um, display this as a featured app in the company portal. Nice. We could add information and privacy URLs. We could put in our own custom logo image. You get the idea. This is all good. I will say, okay. So we've configured that app and now all that's left for us to do is hit the nice happy add button. And notice it's getting it ready. So it's not quite ready yet. We can see there's uploading going on in the background, but this won't take long at all. All right. Well, once that MSI is uploaded, the little warning goes away. And notice I've gone back out to the main apps container here. Remember, we had gone into this add functionality and we had selected our app type of line of business. So now I'm just back out at this main client apps apps area. And look at this without even refreshing. I see the Foxit reader is in my list of apps here. Notice it is not assigned. That's great for us to see because we know we have that step to do. Now, it's kind of tempting to click on the ellipses here to assign, but notice that's just to delete the app from our repository here. So what we have to do is go into the Foxit reader and then we have our assignments area. So we're going to add our group. You know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and go for the uh, test user group again. So I'm going to choose that we want this to be available for enrolled devices. Notice how nicely we can make it a required thing. We can uninstall it from here. So great options here. And then we go to included groups and I am going to say that I want to include the group of test users. So we select, we say, okay, we say, okay. And then we make sure to save. So there we have it. The assignment has been done for that line of business application. And clearly what's left for us to do is go out to the client and see if this worked. So here we are out at our Windows 10 system and we can see that we got a notification in the company portal. I love it. And that is that the wonder list is installed. That's the app that we did thanks to the Windows Store for Business. Pretty cool. Alrighty. Well, let me clear that notification and let's now fire up the company portal because we should have a line of business app that's ready to go. Now, remember, we're seeing this, we should see it right away because notice I had closed the portal and now we are logging in again. So we get a sync of the display. So that's kind of cool. And it's one of the reasons why you might want to educate your users to just close the company portal. Then when they need it, they go into the company portal and they're going to sign in and they're seeing the latest stuff. So there's the Foxit reader. We said we wanted to show it under the featured apps area and it is showing up there. And this MSI can be installed from this happy install button. So look at this consistency of experience, right? This is just like a Windows Store app even though it is not a Windows Store app. We are pretending, remember, that we wrote this custom line of business app in our own organization. So there we go, it's downloading. Now, one more reminder. Because this looks to us to be a Windows Store app, just remember, hey, this thing is not going to update automatically. It is not a Windows Store app. So, you know, watch out for the, ne the need of updating this application. We could uninstall it using Intune. We could then roll out the new version that we want them to install would be one way to handle that. Also notice that I got lazy on the icon and didn't use one. And that doesn't give the Foxit reader the, you know, visual appeal that it should have in here. 
So there it is. Foxit Reader's installed. I just went down to my start menu and fired it up. And we can see the app is running beautifully. There is the Foxit Reader in all its glory. I'm going to make it my new default PDF reader <laughs> and uh, run it through its paces. Uh, by the way, just so you know, the advantage that many like about this product is unlike like uh, most free PDF readers, you can actually use this product to create a PDF. So that's pretty cool where you can't do that with most free solutions. Remember as well, all of those wonderful options that you have, right? We have a very Windows 10 bias in this training because our star of the show, the lead actor is Windows 10. But remember, we could be deploying apps with Intune out to all those wonderful BYOD devices like the iPhones, the Android phones, the tablets, etc. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. For